Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is a video about large growing shrubs. These are gonna be things that can go on the border of your property to create a screen or a wind block perhaps, or maybe there's a spot on the corner of your foundation where you can use something uh, that's larger. But most of these things are going to be labeled somewhere eight foot plus uh, and uh, will be controllable. Again, I like to talk about in these videos, think about labels as maintainable at. So if this Osmanthus fragrance is labeled at eight to 12 feet, it would be easy to keep at that height. It's probably gonna try to get bigger than that uh, in the future. The plants don't have some sort of automatic off switch. So jumping right in, this is Osmanthus fragrance or fragrant tea olive. This is a, a fall and winter blooming shrub. Basically warm nights uh, in the fall and warm nights in the uh, late winter. Uh, we get uh, small, uh, small flowers along the stems that are incredibly, incredibly fragrant. This is not the most cold tolerant plant that will be in this video. This one is most of the time listed zones eight to 11, but we're in zone seven B in Raleigh is where I work out of and they're all over zone seven. Uh, if you're going to plant one in zone seven, I'd spring plant it so that it has a season to get established before it goes, um, before it goes into its first winter. But again, seven in parentheses, eight to 11, definitely hardy. And in eight to 11, you can put it out as a screening plant and, the, and have the wind. Um, you know, uh, not, not cause it a problem. But this is one of the best, the best options for a screening plant here in the South. You can't talk about large growing shrubs or screening plants without talking about Arborvitae. These are, uh, this is Emerald Arborvitae behind me and right there in front of the camera where Steph is, those are DeGroote's Arborvitae. Both of these are Thuja occidentalis. And if you look at the native range of where Thuja occidentalis is actually from, it's actually north of Pennsylvania into Canada. And we try to grow these way down in the south and literally every place you go. Um, they're beautiful in the containers. They're soft to the touch. They have that perfect Christmas tree look that people, you know, are really, really drawn to. Um, but it's a bit hot here in zone 7B and, and in zone 8 where folks are trying to uh, grow these. And so they do have some stress related issues. If you go without watering these, you know, they can they can have problems pretty quickly. They can get bagworms from, you know, stress-related insect problems, uh, that kind of thing. Um, but again, this is one of the most widely sold uh, plants. And they, they, you know, I've seen these as tall as 25 feet. Um, you know, most folks are probably putting them on the corner of a foundation, trying to keep them in that 10, 12 foot range, something like that. I will say that up in the western part of North Carolina, uh, I've seen the North Carolina Department of Transportation using DeGroote's uh, on the side of the interstate, and they do seem to hold up overall better than emerald uh, in the landscape. But I think this plant should really be something that folks in the Northeast and in Northern climates should be looking at. The other thing is, uh, these aren't, <laughs> I don't talk about deer resistance a whole lot, but I wanna talk about this plant. If you do have deer, this is another thing to avoid on these. They will just limb them up from the bottom as high as they can reach up they'll defoliate them. It turned them into actually kind of interesting art, <laughs> if that's what you're going for, uh, but keep that in mind, uh, deer, deer love them. Here's two more great fast growing evergreen screening plants. The one in the back here is Prague Viburnum. This one's very cold hardy, uh, hardy up to zone five. Some winters can actually kill this plant back or defoliate it up there, but uh, it comes right back from it very quickly. It gets a fragrant cluster of flowers on it. Uh, in the uh, spring, I have a recent video on the garden plants with uh, Jim Putnam channel. If you want to go back, go see some more details about Prague Viburnum. This is a great, it's a great plant. Uh, more sun, the fuller, the fuller it is, uh, but it'll take some light shade as well. You just have to do a little bit of pruning on it, um, you know, after it flowers in the spring. Great plant. In front of that, there's some Shindo Viburnum. This is a very fast growing uh, upright Viburnum that's uh, really become one of the top selling screening plants available. I see these just just everywhere now. Uh, it does get a uh, flower and a red fruit on it. It takes several years for it to show up typically. This plant, uh, when I'm talking about screening plants with folks, uh, I, I, I like to t recommend mixed screens. That's one thing I should say in this video about large plants is I'm not, I'm not giving you these examples so you go out and buy one thing and make a hundred foot line of them. Uh, it's best to have some sort of mixed border so that if some sort of disease or insect problem comes along, um, it doesn't take out your entire screen at one time. This plant, I always tell people, this is the one I would stand back and decide 
what area do I really want to screen? What's most important? If I'm sitting on my screen porch and I'm looking at the neighbor's screen porch, that's where I put the Shindo viburnum in that line. It, I think it's the toughest, uh, most resilient, thickest, you know, most reliable screening plant we have here uh, in, the, in the south. It, but you're going to think I'm lying to you about the rate of growth. You put this thing in the ground, it won't grow for a little while. It seems to require, even in a container in a nursery, it does the exact same thing. It requires a period of time to get, get rooted in and established, and then it takes off very, very quickly. So most of the time when people purchase these Chinese hollies uh, as screening plants or compact uh, growing plants, they choose Dwarf Burford. Dwarf Burford's always been the most available one. I let a Dwarf Burford holly grow out for about 15 years at my nursery, and it was not only 10 to 12 feet tall, it was also 10 to 12 feet wide. And I don't think a lot of people have that much ground space to give up. So I've always preferred needlepoint. And if you look in this group of needlepoint hollies, you can see that most of the growth is very vertical. And uh, I think it's a better, um, th th this one's gonna be in the medium size video and in the large video. So you can keep this plant from four to six feet, you know, as a medium size shrub. If you got, you know, tall windows or a corner of a foundation, again, it's very vertical. Uh, or it can be put on the edge of your property as a screening plant and uh, get up into that eight to 12 foot range over a period of time and uh, just make a fantastic screening plant. But again, it's adaptable to almost any situation. I think it's a better choice for most landscapes than Dwarf Burford because it just doesn't take up as much of a footprint. So we might as well jump right over to uh, Dwarf Burford again. I'm gonna put this one in the medium sized plant uh, group and the large growing plant group. If you just leave it alone, again, I had one that got you know, 12 feet tall and it would have still been growing uh, if it was there uh, if it was there today. But again, can easily be kept in that six to eight foot uh, height range. But again, look at the growth habit on this one versus what we just saw uh, on the needle points where the needle points are very vertical. You see this one's gonna spread out uh, as much as it is um, gonna get tall. Uh, but again, I'm not knocking this plant in any way. I just think a lot of folks have smaller, on a smaller lot, uh, needle point just makes sense. The name Dwarf Burford's a bit deceiving. Uh, you would think a plant with a, you know, that's called dwarf something would not get 12 feet tall, but it's dwarf of Burford holly. Burford holly is really a small tree almost. We've seen Burford hollies that are, you know, in the 30 foot plus range. Uh, so it is dwarf of that. So, uh, but if you're looking for a broadleaf, shiny, dark green holly like this, it's actually a dwarf. Carissa is the one you're looking for. So this is an interesting one. This is a uh, Steed's holly. Steeds is, a, if, is like if you took compacta holly, which becomes a pretty large round ball, and then you took the skinny, super skinny sky pencil holly and you combine them together, you'd get steeds. Steeds can be shaped as a small little Christmas tree. It can be pruned very tightly. These have just been allowed to grow up and stretch out. But they, they can be sheared uh, into little Christmas trees and be kept as kind of medium sized ornamental shrubs on the corner of a foundation, maybe next to a set of steps going into the house used as a container plant that way as a small little Christmas tree, or this plant can go out to the edge of your property and just be allowed to grow and get quite big. And so, you know, it's also would make an effective screening plant uh, where you don't need, you know, you don't need 20 feet, um, but you need more than six feet. Uh, this is, this would be the perfect plant for that. Uh, again, I'm going to say on the, you know, these upright Japanese hollies, sky pencil would go into a narrow plant video. And this one right here, I do see that they're not the most drought tolerant things in the world, even after they're established. So this is one, it's worth having, but if you know you're in an abnormally dry time, steeds and sky pencil are gonna be two that I'm gonna drag a water hose to for sure. So we just showed the steeds hollies being allowed to just grow upright and would become really good screening plants. Or again, they can be pruned into these little uh, Christmas trees like this, and you can shear the sides of them whenever you wanna shear the sides of them, but pretty much anything from you know, five feet in height to as tall as you want to let it get. And, you know, perfect little Christmas tree like that. This one is definitely a screening plant. Uh, this is golden Oakland holly. Uh, Steph and I have one of these in a container in the garden. And we also have one uh, in the ground in a part shaded space. And the variegation's held up quite well in the, uh, in the shade as well. There's a green Oakland holly we'll find in one of these screening plant videos and one called oak leaf. Uh, oak leaf's been around a long time. Oakland is an improved version of oak leaf. And then this is the golden uh, Oakland holly here. This is one of the best variegations in a holly that I've seen. A lot of times variegated hollies are just kind of all over the place, you know, where they're, you know, there's some darker green. The, the variegation is just different on every, on every branch. And this one is really quite stable and uh, therefore very, very colorful. What a great pop of color this is. 
This will get as large as you want to let it get. If you're in a hurry to have a screen, a variegated plant's not going to grow as fast as a green version. So you'd probably want Oakland if you were in a real hurry. Um, the, but the golden Oakland would definitely be worth the wait. Look how beautiful the, this plant is. Camellias are amongst my favorites. You can probably tell that from uh, if you've watched my videos for any length of time. Uh, I do love camellias. I'm trying to put the most some of the more interesting ones uh, in this uh, in the video here with the uh, large growing plants. This one's called Autumn Rocket, and you can see the fastidious growth habit it has. It's very unusual this way. Uh, most uh, Camellia sasanquas would have been much wider at this point than this one is. They're not doing anything special to this. This is the way this thing grows. And so if you have an, a narrow spot where you can use something that gets 10 or 12 feet in height, uh, maybe creep through that eventually, uh, easily controlled though. White flowering, flowers in the fall, uh, mid to late fall, right up until Christmas. Great new burgundy sort of foliage on it uh, during the growing season when it's actively growing. It's absolutely covered in flower buds. It'll be blooming. I'm filming this in September. By October, it'll be showing some color. But look at this. If you've got that little narrow spot where you're trying to cover something on your house, this autumn rocket camellia would be perfect for that. I'm in a sea of ruby laura pedalum here at Adcox Nursery in uh, Fuquay, North Carolina. This is actually a nursery you guys can come to uh, if you're interested. And uh, looking on their website, they have some open Saturday mornings uh, if you're interested. Uh, mo a lot of the nurseries I go to are mostly wholesale. This one does offer some retail. Ruby laura pedalum is an interesting plant. This is one that I grew for a long time when I had my nursery. Every tag you ever see is going to say four to six feet by four to six feet. And it'll absolutely get four to six feet by four to six feet, and then it will just keep going. And so, I, I, you know, I put this in the medium-sized plant category, but I will tell you, when I left my nursery behind, I had one that was at least 12 feet in height, and it had been pruned several times over the years. So there's nothing, there's no real off switch for this plant, but it's got great purple foliage, great, there's little frilly uh, witch hazel-like flowers on it in the spring, and you'll see some residual ones even here in September. When we're filming this this one has a lot of the breeding work that's been done on these purple laura petal and it's have the purple all the way through ruby has a has a has, has kind of a green uh center to it it's actually very attractive the two-tone coloration is very attractive the flowers are attractive definitely worth it as a plant but you know for me, I don't necessarily buy this as a kind of mid-sized plant. I buy this one as a screening plant and uh, just let it get whatever size it wants to get over time and let it do its thing uh, and it'll be beautiful. So we looked at that golden Oakland holly and I mentioned Oakland and oak leaf. This is oak leaf holly. You can see how fastidious this is, meaning it just wants to go up, you know, directly up, which is great. Again, I, you know, there's a, a lot of folks have small lots and if you're using something like Nellie Stevens holly, which is probably the most popular of these upright hollies, it gets very broad uh, at the base without a lot of really taming it. Uh, whereas Oakland or Oak Leaf are gonna grow narrow like this kind of on their own. Uh, these are uh, self-fruiting, and so they have the male and female parts uh, on the plant, so they will berry set even with only one, only one plant, but probably will perform better fruiting uh, with more than one plant. But this is Oak Leaf holly. Next up is a Clara. Uh, this variety is called Leanne. There are lots of different great uh, Clara. They just make great evergreen shrubs, and some of them are easy to keep small, you know, to, you know uh, medium size evergreen shrubs. Uh, that would include Leanne right here, uh, or they can, a lot of them can get really, really big. This one can get some size on it as well, so I've put it in the large group as well. This one, um, you know, will get between 10 and 12 feet if you just let it maybe a bit more than that over time. But where I have them out here in the front garden, I'm actually gonna keep them you know, about this height. This is about as tall as I'm going to allow this one to get. Leanne gets just beautiful reddish burgundy foliage uh, anytime it's actively growing. So here we are near the end of the season and it's still got a little bit of new growth on it. So it has some of the color, but it has a lot more of it uh, during the uh, spring and uh, early, early summer months. During the winter, I'll cut this down about two feet below where I want to keep it, and it will just spring back there uh, during the uh, spring. So again, a, a good medium evergreen shrub or a large screening plant, Leanne Clara. So some of the Clara that I show on the channel could be kept in that medium size range. They're variegated ones like Juliet uh, that are 
easily kept much smaller. There's Leanne, which we have here in the front garden. It can be kept four or five feet, but it'll get 10 feet. This one's called Bigfoot. So there's only one direction this one's going. Uh, this one is going to get as much as 15 or 20 feet in height. A uh, great choice as a screening plant. Uh, I, I will tell you that Clara eventually thin out a bit down at the bottom and as, as they kind of, the top of the plant will shade the bottom of the plant, which for me in this garden is opportunity. We'll just tuck something under here when it stretches up big and tall. It sat here uh, most of the first season it was in the ground because it's in a kind of a dry shady area over here. All this, this, will, this will absolutely take full sun. But where I've got this is in a little bit of dry shade and you can see how full it is. Uh, it really, once it got itself anchored about mid, by midsummer this year, has really started to put on some growth. I expect this thing to grow at least a couple feet, maybe three feet in, in a single season next year. But this one's called Bigfoot. Great for creating a border between you and a neighbor very quickly. Here's an arborvitae called Forever Goldie. Uh, this is Thuja plicata, and I find these to be a bit more drought tolerant overall than uh, Thuja occidentalis that I talked about with like the emeralds and things that I see really struggling in the heat. I think these are a bit, any Thuja plicata is a little more heat tolerant and a little more drought tolerant. What a great plant this is. This one is listed on the tag for 10 to 12 feet in height and uh, three or four, four to five feet in width. So super narrow upright habit. My guess is, is that pretty much every one of these upright conifers I've ever seen will get taller uh, than the uh, tag says. But I think you could keep it sheared uh, if you wanted to try to keep it in that 10 foot height range, but great for a corner of a foundation. And I think just overall a little bit more of an industrial plant with a bright pop of gold color on it. So most of us are used to Indian hawthorns being in the landscape, being little round, little round balls. Uh, and I put one in a compact uh, plant list recently. If you want to go back and take a look at that video, that's super disease resistant. This variety right here is called Rosalinda and it has it's big in every way. This one can get 10 to 15 feet in height and equally as wide. Typically grows as a shrub, full down to the ground. This one has actually been limbed up into a small tree. Gets incredible clusters of fragrant pink flowers on it in the spring. They're wildly fragrant. Great, great plant. Super clean, dark green foliage, but much, much, much larger than the dwarf varieties of Indian hawthorn. But this is a great plant. Uh, it's not as cold, not quite as cold hardy as the uh, dwarf, um, some of the dwarf varieties that we tend to list in zone seven. This one's definitely listed for zone eight. Again, I'm in zone seven B um, and uh, I did put a cover on this one time last winter when we were having some high winds and cold weather to protect it. I think now that it's been in the ground for more than a year, it's gonna be totally fine. But this is a great plant in warmer areas as a border plant or a screening plant between you and a neighbor. So I'm putting this one in a large growing shrub video of evergreen things, uh, but it's probably more accurately a tree, really. I think most people would call it a tree. This is an evergreen dogwood. Uh, this one's called Empress of China. Very long flowered, um, almost two months this thing flowered uh, this year. It's been in the ground for uh, two and a half years or so, and it's reached uh, eight to nine feet in height at this point. I think we'll see it get every bit of 15 feet in this space. Flowers for a long, long time, and then it, ha it has this uh, red uh, fruit on it that starts to color up here in the fall. So this thing is constantly, constantly doing something. Uh, it's really kind of tardily deciduous, meaning that it holds its leaves throughout the winter, but it does shed a lot of them in the late winter as new leaves are coming on it. So there's really no gap in time where it doesn't have leaves, but uh, technically it does lose uh, these leaves late in the winter, but what a beautiful plant this is. I mean, look at the screen it's creating out here at the, at the front of our garden. Uh, we, you know, really can't see through it at all. And uh, again, it'll get about 15 feet tall. Beautiful group of Nelly R. Stevens. This is definitely gonna be a, um, a plant that's very frequently used as a screening plant. Again, as big as you wanna uh, let it get. These have been sheared pretty narrow as you can see. Its natural habit is definitely a bit wider than this. And so I'm more, a little more drawn to oak leaf in Oakland than Nellie R. Stevens, but this is just, I mean, it's an easy plant. It's self-fruiting. So you get the, the flowers in the spring and the berries in the fall, it has the great dark green color. And this is one of those plants, if you've got, you know, if you've got a wide enough space to put them in, you can put this in and, and you know, within a few years, it just makes an almost impenetrable boundary. These are wax myrtles. Uh, wax myrtles are native 
uh, large growing shrubs that this can get, these can get as big as you want them to get. It can be tree formed, you know, limbed up from the bottom, which they'll kind of naturally do on their own, or they can be tip pruned a bit uh, to keep them fuller down to the ground. This is a great native option for screening, uh, very quickly screening a neighbor. It's also extremely deer resistant. This is Robin Holly, another fast growing upright evergreen holly. This one stays on the narrower side always been super drawn to robin holly it has perhaps almost the, the richest dark green shiniest foliage of almost any of these upright hollies every time i can i can pick this one out of a crowd uh, just by how dark green uh, that leaf actually is it's also a, it's another self-fruiting one so it will uh it will uh it'll fruit on its own uh, if you only have whether you have one plant or more uh, again I want to reiterate, you know, I wouldn't put in a 50 foot screen of these. I, I, you know, this is a plant you'd plant three of and then, you know, pick something else of these other large growing things that will grow in your area and just kind of break that screen up some. Last up for this large growing evergreen plant video is this Laura Petalum behind me. I'll talk a bit more about it in just a second. Uh, there are other videos for compact growing plants, mid-sized growing plants, another video for large growing plants, and we're going to be covering narrow growing plants and uh, ground covers, all kinds of things in these types of videos coming up. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for that. And thanks to Adcox Nursery and Pender Nursery and Swift Creek Nursery and our own garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, where we filmed all of these plants. So thanks to those guys. This uh, Laura Petalum behind me is called Carolina Midnight. Many of the Laura Petalum that are sold on the market can get uh, this kind of height on them. This is one that just hasn't, it, I pruned it very, very early this year, but it has grown, you can see, probably five additional feet of height since it was pruned earlier in the season. Beautiful purple foliage, beautiful pink frilly flowers on it in the spring, and then it'll get some residual flowers on it. I'm going to absolutely cut this one in half in the late winter this year, and but again, it's going to try to jump up four or five feet. In the compact uh, plant video, or yeah, there's a uh, purple daydream. So there are dwarf ones. I've got one called emerald snow. That's kind of a mid-size growing white flowering one with green foliage. So there are Laura Petalum that will stay smaller, but most of the old varieties and even a lot of the new varieties will do this, you know, if you, <laughs> and so keep that in mind, they're not, make sure you're getting one. If you're going to put it on a foundation, make sure it's not uh, one of the uh, larger growing one or, or ones that can grow this fast. Early wonder camellia. Uh, this is a Camellia japonica that's just very, very interesting because it actually blooms in the fall. Most Camellia japonicas bloom in February, March, April, you know, after they get some cold on them during the winter time. They do carry their flower buds, you know, through the winter and then open at that time. This one will actually start opening flowers at the same time that Camellia sasanquas bloom in the fall and then just continue to bloom anytime it has warm uh, warm days from then right on through March and April. Uh, we had flowers on this thing for almost six months last year. Uh, really amazing, uh, d formal double flower, uh, beautiful, beautiful pink. This one is listed six to eight feet uh, on the tag. It's a Camellia japonica that has an upright habit. Almost certainly it's going to probably blow through 10 feet if you let it. So it can go in a large area or could be maintained uh, more in the uh, you know under eight foot size in that mid-size category. Next up is one of my absolute favorites. This is a Fortune's Osmanthus. This is a named variety called Fruitlandii. It was actually found at Fruitland Nursery uh, in the process of it, be it, it becoming uh, Augusta National Golf Course. Uh, believe it or not, Augusta National was one of the oldest nurseries, oldest plant growing nursery sites in America before it became the golf course that we know. Uh, Fortune's Osmanthus is a cross between Osmanthus fragrance and Osmanthus heterophilus. It gets a lot more of the cold hardiness from one and the flowering from fragrance. Uh, so it's a bit more cold hardy than Osmanthus fragrance. If you're in zone seven, this one's definitely probably the better plant and it blooms just as heavily. These bloom in an odd time of year. They tend to bloom in October, November, then again in March and April. Fast growing evergreen. These, we call these false um, hollies because they look wicked. They actually have little serrated edges on the leaves, but look what I can do here. This, this is kind of super interesting. That, uh, so that's why they're called false hollies because they don't hurt you at all. This is Elysium henryi, 
or Chinese uh, anistry. We actually have native Elysium to the Southeast United States, Mexico, there are several in North America, and then there are several in China, uh, in the South, Southeast Asia as well. Uh, this one has kind of an orangey red flower on it, gets quite big, 20 feet in height. Great screening choice, really tough plants. Almost all Elysium, when you plant them, they can seem a little wimpy at first. They'll wilt, they'll wilt quite a bit, but once they get rooted into the ground, just a really industrial plant. The uh, foliage has, a, has that anise uh, smell to it when you break the leaves. Extremely deer resistant, although I was told recently uh, by Mark Wethington at the Ralston Arboretum that he's, hey, he's had deer uh, snacking on a couple of his Elysium. That seems highly, un highly unusual, um, uh, kind of an interesting story. I, ho I hope that doesn't become the case because this has been one of our uh, kind of go-to plants for, uh, for deer resistance. But this is the Chinese anise tree Elysium henrii. This is a camellia called Winter Snowman. It's a white flowering camellia. It's actually zone six hardy. Uh, uh, this is one of the Ackerman hybrids, uh, which there are a lot of uh, that you can look up that um, are, are, more cold, are considered more cold hardy. Uh, it's, a, um, uh, it's a hybrid between several different species of camellias. Uh, still great flowering. This one will flower mid to late fall up right through December. Uh, every year, beautiful evergreen foliage. The new growth on this one is really, really nice. It's kind of a, almost a burgundy color on it. It'll be slow growing to start. After a while though, it'll pick up some pace in the future uh, and get some height on it. This one can be maintained at four or five feet in height all the way up to 12 feet in height. So kind of pick, pick how you would want to use this plant. Do you need something that stays under six foot? This one can be kept in that range. If you need a, you know, a hedging plant, border plant, you want something that blooms at an interesting time, this is where this, uh, uh, this, this could come in handy and it'll get like 12 feet. There are faster growing hedging plants or border plants. The camellias will definitely be slower than others, but definitely will be worth the wait. This is one of the large growing shrubs you're gonna run into pretty much everywhere you go. Uh, in the south, this is a Ligustrum recurvifolium or a curly leaf Japanese privet. Very fast growing screening plant. You'll see these limbed up into small trees. You'll see these cut down as lower shrubs. You'll see them just allowed to grow and almost become, you know, very large trees. I think on most labels, you're gonna see them six to 10 feet, six to 12 feet, maybe six to 15 feet, something like that on the label. It'll blow through any of those, but maintainable uh, in that range. This plant is problematic in that it is invasive. Um, it is really a completely, Japanese privet has really completely established itself uh, in the Southeast United States. Uh, and, you know, at this point, you know, it's just part of the environment. I just wanna let you know on this plant, you're gonna see it everywhere. You gotta make that decision for yourself, you know, on whether or not you, you know, are gonna use an, in, an invasive plant. One thing I will say, these bloom in the spring, um, kind of with an off, I don't know the odors. Very, it's almost so sweet. It's it's it, it smells bad. Uh, honestly, you can after it flowers, you can shear them uh, and uh, prevent the berry set from happening. So if you do have these, you know you can prevent them from uh, producing seed in your own landscape. But again, this is Ligustrum recurvifolium. You're literally going to see it anywhere you go to buy plants, and it's gonna all, it's gonna be recommended a lot because it is a very fast growing option to create a border between you and a neighbor. This is another great upright, uh, kind of narrow growing uh, evergreen shrub. This is Stellar Ruby Magnolia. Uh, this one uh, is a uh, banana shrub hybrid. It has a very upright, kind of narrow growth habit. The one in our landscape has almost reached seven feet uh, in two years, and it's you know pretty narrow, maybe two and a half feet or so. Blooms in the uh, spring with uh, very fragrant um, banana shrub, like scented flowers or banana scented flowers, and then it will repeat bloom some uh, during the uh, growing season. Here's an example of that right here in September. These have, lots of these have flower buds on them. Same thing at the one at the house. This plant's labeled 10 to 15 feet in height. It's probably gonna go through that eventually, but would be easy to maintain uh, in that size range. Just a great, dark, rich, um, shiny foliage uh, shrub, whether it flowered or not, uh, it would definitely uh, do a great job of making a screen. One of the best fast growing plants to create a screen is a Japanese cedar called Yoshino. This is Yoshino cryptomeria. The cryptomeria can be in a super compact 
plant video, uh, like Globosa nana or dragon prints, and then we can have them in the medium size range where there's ones that only get four or five, six feet big, a lot of named varieties of Cryptomeria. But Yoshino has been around a long time. This one will get 50 feet plus, uh, grows quite, quite quickly uh, once it gets some roots under it. Uh, it's you know it's gonna have a similar growth habit to Leyland Cypress or Green Giant Arborvita in that giant Christmas tree uh, kind, of kind of shape. Like all of them, they will thin out down at the bottom eventually. So, you know, eventually you can kind of see through the bottom. And so, you know, it's, it's a good screening plant, like if you're 20 feet tall, but down toward the bottom, you can, it's still start to get a little thin because they shade the bottom of the plant out. And you can just at that point, limb them up a bit, under plant them with something else. But uh, great choice uh, for, for, a, for a screen. Uh, you know, again, this is not one that I'm going to line up 40 of uh, <laughs> in, a, in a row, uh, but it, if you have kind of a key spot you want to block, this would be a great plant for that, and then you can use some other things left and right of it. Here's a big, beautiful crop of Green Giant Arborvita pruned just absolutely perfectly. Single leaders, you know, they've just been, you know, they're just absolutely perfect. Uh, these are at Adcox Nursery in Fuquay, North Carolina, um, who I've shopped with for a long time when I had a landscape company. And then when I had my nursery, I got some of my money back because he bought a lot of one gallon material from me. <laughs> but uh, I've done business with these folks for a long, long time and they grow beautiful material. Uh, green, these, again, these green giants are perfect. I'm a little fearful for this plant because when I see them, when people use them, they're using 20 of them in a row everywhere, all over the place. And it just, you know, takes me back to red tip fatinia, which were overused and then got a disease problem. And then Leyland cypress, which we've seen have problems in the landscape. So I'm wondering, I hope it's not the future for this plant because it is a big, beautiful evergreen plant that's heat tolerant, uh, you know, drought tolerant. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a great plant. You know, uh, let's, if you got a key spot you want to, you know, you want to screen, plant one or, you know, maybe three of these and then plant some other things where you don't necessarily need something. You know, I kind of question also, do you need a 50 foot tall screen? Because that's how big this plant's going to get. Um, so, you know, I, I, have to, I throw that out there that I do, I am concerned about the future of this plant because it's, it's perfection has, has turned it into, uh, you know, it, the kind of go-to plant in almost every circumstance, it seems, for a, uh, for screening plants where conifers are used, but they are beautiful and this is a, a fantastic crop of them. This is a plant I recommend a lot uh, when I'm doing uh, consultations. This is a uh, Taylor's Juniper. Almost everybody watching this video can grow this plant. Uh, this, this one can reach 30 feet in height ultimately and be super, super narrow. Think of it as a slightly wider Italian cypress uh, with a blue-green foliage. This is a great replacement here in where it's hotter for something like Emerald Arborvita that tends to be heat stressed a little more. But I think this is, this is one of the, it's just a perfect plant. If you have a super narrow space that you're trying to create a screen, if, you're, if, you're, if your house is right next door to another house and they, the screen porches are on the same side of the house and you have that super narrow spot, Taylor's Juniper is a good choice uh, for that. Um, all of these conifers, you're going to plant them and they're not going to grow very quickly to start with. Once this thing gets going though, it can put on a you know, foot to two feet in a single season uh, in the future. But beautiful blue-green conifer with a super narrow habit and basically zero maintenance. We're at my friends at Swift Creek Nursery uh, this morning and uh, found several things in a row here that are, make great screening plants. Uh, this is Christmas Jewel Holly and this is a, uh, this is a hybrid upright narrow growing holly it looks kind of wicked but it's actually fairly soft uh, to the touch it has a slightly smaller leaf than some of the other broadleaf hollies that we see uh, growing in conical shapes this one produces lots of berries uh, against the green against that green foliage through the winter time just really great low maintenance easy upright narrow growing holly of which there are lots and lots of them uh, in the nursery industry I really am drawn to this one though. I think the, uh, the, the texture of the, of the foliage is really, really nice. Uh, definitely tall and narrow without doing much work to it. Uh, next to that are some Jack Frost Ligustrum. And I could probably put this in a video of medium sized plants and large growing plants. This is, it, uh, Jack Frost, as you can see, how it's growing in this container, has more of a weeping habit. So it's, it grows in kind of layers going up and eventually can reach 15 feet in height doing that. Uh, but I see folks keeping these as, as low as six feet uh, in height. And so uh, you can do whichever. You see how bright and showy this plant is. Uh, 
Um, this is, you know, if you want to put something that's a little more colorful in your, in your screen, uh, this is definitely it. Uh, these will flower with kind of a, honestly, kind of a funky smelling flower to me in the, uh, in the spring. They're almost too fragrant. And uh, at that time, you can prune those flowers off to prevent any seeds from setting, to prevent, uh, prevent this plant from uh, trying to seed itself around your uh, landscape. But uh, this is a plant that I sold as many as I could grow, honestly, uh, when I was in the nursery business. That's Jack Frost Ligustrum. Another one I think is now kind of underused is Foster Holly. Uh, this, is, this is a holly that's been around for a long time, and we don't... We just don't see it as much anymore. It can get, this one can get 25 feet or more uh, in height if you let it, but it can be cut into whatever Christmas tree shape you want. It has a narrower leaf uh, than a lot of the other broadleaf hollies like Nellie R. Stevens or some of the others that are used. Uh, it's kind of, like I said, kind of fallen out of favor because it was just one of the older uh, varieties. But a couple neat things about this plant. Uh, it is a hybrid of two natives. So, um, uh, uh, Cassine, uh, Ilex Cassine, and then Ilex Opaca, which is our American, our American holly. It's a cross. It was a natural cross between those two that was found in Florida, uh, and it is one of the rare hollies that actually does not need a male uh, cross uh, to to uh, produce berries. Uh, there's an actual t there's a there's a term from that uh, uh, for that that I'll put on the screen, but it is an unusual plant. It does not need a male partner to produce the uh, to produce the fruit. All right, we found a group of uh, Little Jim Magnolias. Uh, here's a bud still on on the one that Steph is filming there that uh, has not opened. It's uh, well into September, so it's a little late for them to be uh, flowering. They would be done out in the uh, landscape at this point. Uh, little Jim is, is frequently used as a screening plant uh, because it stays much smaller than the, our just regular native Magnolia grandiflora. Uh, the leaves on the back, you know, have a nice, uh, nice brown uh, coloration. Uh, there are some teddy bear is a good, uh, it may be a slightly better selection for for the back of the leaf, uh, but both have an upright narrow habit. The glossy green foliage, the foliage is a little smaller on a on a dwarf uh, as you as you would expect. But again, you get the flowers, um, you get the. Uh, the little modified cones with the red seeds on them. Everything that you'd expect from a Magnolia grandiflora, but instead of getting, you know, 80 feet tall and 50 feet wide and taking your entire property, it grows in a more upright, narrow habit, you know, to 25 feet and maybe 8 to 10 feet in width. So still a pretty big, still something that's pretty big. So you need space for it, but definitely uh, worth the time and the weight that it would take for this to become a screening plant because it is slightly slower than some of the other things uh, that are in these uh, screening plant or, or large growing shrub videos, uh, but definitely worth it. Um, really, really beautiful. And it is a, um, a named cultivar of our native uh, Southern Magnolia. And we just found a teddy bear Magnolia close to those little gems. And you can see how the back of the leaf is a slightly, I think a slightly better coloration and it creates more, a better kind of two-tone uh, leaf than the uh, little gem does. Carolina Sapphire, Arizona Cypress. This has become one of the most popular uh, screening plants. It's super, super heat tolerant. So, you know, more so than any of the arborvitas here in the Southeast, this is gonna make a great choice. Extremely drought tolerant. I see these being used by the Department of Transportation on the side of the highway. Usually that's a pretty good sign for a plant, uh, plant being really, really tough. Uh, certain times of the year, it's much bluer uh, than it is other times of the year. Uh, but great, just fantastic color. It definitely has a fragrance. Uh, in fact, when I any anytime I get anywhere near them, uh, a group of them, I can you can definitely pick it up. So I think some people will like it, and some people won't uh, like that uh, the fragrance that it comes with. But this is definitely a planted and forget it kind of screening plant. But it's going to get big, and so you need to know this going into this. Is this this is a a 50 foot tall kind of uh, Christmas, a blue Christmas tree. And so do you have that kind of space? Because it's also gonna get wide down at the bottom uh, over the years. Eventually all of these giant growing conifers like this will thin a bit down at the bottom. And so sometime in the future, you'll probably end up with it kind of thin, you know, in that bottom 10 feet or so, and you can underplant around it at that time. But uh, this is probably the best choice if you do want one of those giant 
Christmas tree shaped uh, screening plants uh, in your landscape if you're in the south. Here's a gold Nellie Stevens holly. Uh, Nellie Stevens is one of the most popular plants for uh, screening. I have talked about it being a bit wider down at the base than some of the other selections like Oakland or Oak Leaf. Uh, you know, if you've, but if you have ground space, definitely a great plant for that. This is obviously a gold uh, version of it. Most of the, the brightest gold parts of it are in the newest, newest growth. And then it, you know, a, as the leaves get older, you know, the interior foliage there is a darker green color. Gold plants are gonna be slightly slower growing uh, than their green counterparts. And so this probably won't make a screen quite as fast, but once it does, you know, look how, you know, bright and showy this is. I'm probably a little more drawn to golden Oakland holly, which is like a variegation rather than having just gold tips on it. The var variegation seems a bit more kind of re all the way through the plant. Uh, but I mean, this is not, not an unattractive plant at all, uh, but this is gold Nellie Stevens. We talk frequently about having a mixed screen using lots of different screening plants to create your border and not just one thing so it doesn't get wiped out somehow in the future. This might be a plant that you get a couple of and put you know one over here and one over here so you just have a bright pop of color in your mixed screen. Here's a group of Mackey Podocarpus. Uh, this plant can get quite tall uh, but in a very fastidious manner, so very upright and narrow. If you go down into Charleston and Savannah, you'll frequently see lots that are near downtown where the houses are really close together. This is kind of the preferred screening plant. Uh, great, super, super heat tolerant, dry, dry tolerant, you know, if you, you know, in sandy soils. Uh, we're probably right on the edge of where, you know, I'm in zone 7B in Raleigh. That's right about the edge um, of how cold tolerant the Podocarpus is. This is Mackey. Uh, and Mackey can be sheared, again, very, very narrow. Occasionally you cut the tops of them off just to let the kind of spindly part down here, you know, let the uh, caliper catch up a little bit. Um, otherwise they can be a bit wispy up at the top, but really, really easy, easy plant, especially if you don't have a lot of width, you know, ground width to use. Uh, this is a very good choice for that. This plant is absolutely going to be one of the best selling fast growing screening plants. This is Screenplay Holly. This one can reach 20 to 30 feet in height and eight to probably 15 feet in width if you let it. It's gonna become a very big plant, grows very, very quickly. It can be controlled much smaller than that. It gets glossy red berries uh, in the fall as you would expect on most upright growing hollies. It doesn't have any points on the end of the leaf. So if you have to do any pruning on it or work around it, uh, it, won't, it won't eat you alive. I've seen this plant grow two or three feet in a single season uh, right out of the gate. It'll just jump up and start growing. This is a cross between Ilex Integra and Ilex Latifolia, uh, two hollies that are, uh, uh, are, are, pretty cold, are considered pretty cold hardy. So this one's listed for zone seven, but I have a feeling that it's probably hardy up into zone six as well. I think it'll prove to be that, but this is really a great, great screening plant. We put this one in, it was half the height it is now uh, earlier this year. And I think next year it will just jump and go. Uh, it'll probably grow three plus feet next year for sure. My next large growing evergreen shrub is Mood Ring Podocarpus. This thing has the perfect name. This is a Podocarpus that all the new growth on it is, is starts off kind of pink and evolves through several different colors before it becomes dark green later in the growing season. Shooting this in middle September so it doesn't have much of that new growth on it, good because it's about to, it needs to be going dormant. But in the spring, it'll be absolutely covered in that pink new growth. Like other upright podocarpus like this, it'll reach 10 to 15 feet in height, but super, super narrow. Uh, so if you have a narrow, a narrow space where you're looking for something that you can screen a neighbor with, these upright podocarpus are great choices for that. Mackey's a great one, but I really like this mood ring because it does, you know, has this interesting foliage color. Uh, this one is in a little bit more shade than it would probably like. So it's tried to stretch on me a little bit. I'm going to have to do a bit of pruning on it. Uh, but to, to have it in this spot, this was definitely full sun or part shade. And I've got this one almost in what I would call shade, but it's stretching a bit, but it still looks great. Um, it's super interesting plant, very, very drought tolerant, a great, cho great choice in coastal areas uh, in the South. And uh, you really do see a lot of these in Charleston and Savannah and those places. This one is at one of our absolute favorites in the garden. This is Juliet Clara. Uh, Clara are great because they're pretty fast growing, disease resistant, uh, pest resistant screening plants, typically. 
uh, Juliet can be kept more in that six to eight foot range where some of them like Bigfoot, which we have in the garden as well, can get over 20 feet in height. And so uh, we're gonna put this one in kind of the middle size group, but it could be used as a small screening plant as well if you didn't need a heck of a lot of height. One thing I'll say about it though is variegated plants tend to grow a little bit slower than their green counterparts. So it might take a little while longer if you were gonna use it as a screening plant, but any kind of mixed border in front of larger growing uh, things with a, with a green backdrop behind it, it really makes this variegation pop. On the corner of a foundation would be the perfect place uh, for this plant. It'll grow in the full sun or part shade, probably grow in even a little bit deeper shade, just gonna stretch a bit. You'd have to do a little bit of pruning on it, but what an evergreen, what a beautiful, perfect evergreen with glossy, variegated leaves. Next up is one of Steph's absolute favorite plants, and this will be in a video of medium-sized growing plants and large growing plants. This Roman candle podocarpus can reach 10 to 15 feet in height. Very upright, narrow habit, as you would expect from these upright podocarpus. This white variegation on it makes it much slower growing than its green counterparts, and so I would not expect it to get to 15 feet very quickly, and I think you could keep it six, seven, eight feet as long as you wanted to. Uh, you can just cut cut its top, cut top off of it anytime you want to, cut any side branches off anytime you want to. Beautiful, beautiful plant. These are drought tolerant, um, deer resistant, uh, coastal resistant, um, you know, great in coastal environments. You see these down at the coast uh, quite a bit. We've got this one growing in a lot of shade. Uh, I think the variegation one, the variegated one like Roman candle here is gonna benefit from part shade conditions whereas the green podocarpus would definitely prefer full sun or part shade, but this will get a little bit of a burn on it. Uh, I've seen these uh, in a bit too much sun and with you know just a, little, just a little scalding on them. So I think part shade is best. Great for a narrow screening plant. And so if you have, you know, if you're really close to your neighbor in a part shade space, this would be a great plant to create a screen. Again, it's gonna be kind of slow growing to get there. So you might want to invest a little more when you buy this plant and buy a slightly, slightly larger one. Most of the time, I'm all about planting tiny plants. This one, you might splurge uh, just to skip a season or two. It would also be great in a mixed screen as an accent. So if you're using lots of green things in your screen, a couple of these, you know, scattered in it would really, really stand out. So the last one for the large growing plants here will be Elysium floridanum. Uh, there's gonna be more of these videos to come with narrow growing shrubs and narrow trees and small compact plants and ground covers. We have lots of these planned uh, coming up, so make sure you're following along with the channel. For that, thanks to Adcox Nursery, Pender Nursery, and Swift Creek Nursery for letting us film uh, at their place for uh, a lot of these videos you're seeing with the compact plants, mid plants, all these different beautiful shrubs uh, are filmed here at, in our garden as well. This is Elysium floridanum. This is a very large growing native shrub to the Southeast United States. Uh, it has a very strong smelling foliage. Uh, smells like anise, uh, makes it very pest resistant, uh, deer resistant. Gets red flowers on it. And then uh, this super interesting uh, immature fruit right here. The flowers are interesting and so is the, uh, this, the immature fruit that forms on the plant as well. Ha grows with a grows in part shade or full shade uh very very drought tolerant but here back on this back line uh it's very very dry on our lot and it's uh we've had to water this thing quite a bit to get it uh to root in this year we've hardly had to water it at all but last year it was crying for water it is a Great though, because this plant will tell you when it's dry. Some plants will just start defoliating or looking bad. This one will, will let you know and you can water it well. These will take boggy conditions. If you have boggier shade conditions and you're looking for a fast growing, uh, especially native plant that there's deer resistant and, and can block a, neighbor, a view of a neighbor's property pretty quickly. This is a great choice for that. We have four different Elysium in this landscape and they all have some different interesting characteristic to them from foliage color, flower color, that kind of thing. So be on the lookout for Elysium for all types of, uh, you know, needs where you, you know, you need an evergreen shrub that there is again, deer resistant. There's an Italian Cypress uh, right behind it. Uh, doesn't necessarily like the South all that much, but uh, that one's doing that one's doing just fine and to the left of that is a distillium it's a very upright growing distillium which has become a really nice screening plant it's probably eight nine feet tall i'll ask them what variety this is before i uh before i leave this morning 
There's an osmanthus, a goshiki osmanthus right there, which uh, goshiki means five colors in Japanese. It's got pinks and whites and yellows in the foliage. I've covered that plant many times. Uh, it, I've seen this plant as big as eight and 10 feet tall, slow, slow to get there. So that one up on the hills, maybe three and a half feet, four feet, and uh, it's doing a good job. Here's a Laura Petalum, one of the larger growing Laura Petalum varieties. This one's gotten maybe six feet tall and it's perfect screening plant up here on this bank because again, um, the, the, the hill is kind of helping with this. Uh, here's a gold mop cypress, which is, you know, these things can get 25 feet tall um, if you let them or can be kept um, as little, little round balls. Uh, this is a gulf tide, another one of those gulf tide osmanthus. And uh, moving on down, this is an ever, evergreen, uh, this is a magnolia. This is that serendipity, and I showed this in Mark Wethington's video at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. This is serendipity magnolia. Just a great, great plant. The next one is a kind of a semi-evergreen plant. This is a, a, a Chinese snowball bush. I've covered this one a couple times on my channel. No flowers on it right now in October, but this is a very large growing uh, viburnum that gets huge clusters of white flowers in the late spring. For a very long time, for maybe four, four to six weeks, this thing can be in bloom and uh, will repeat bloom some in the fall. This one had been pruned pretty hard, so it's not... Uh, not doing any repeat uh, fall blooming. Uh, like I say, these are, these are hardy in six to nine uh, in zone six and seven. They're kind of semi evergreen, but it's still a big enough, full enough plant that it still makes a good screening plant even in zone six and seven. Uh, the next one is this uh, Romeo uh, Clethra. I have covered these uh, pretty thoroughly on the channel as well. There's another one um, called Juliet that I'll show you um, in one of the other videos, but Romeo has a really bright variegation. Again, these variegated plants aren't going to be quite as fast uh, to cover, uh, to, to create a screen as some others, but these will get about eight to 10 feet in height, uh, hardy in zone seven and up, and a really beautiful plant. Uh, what else would it need to do other than look like that 12 months out of the year? This is copper top viburnum. I've covered this on the channel uh, several times, and this is a very fast growing evergreen shrub that uh, has this beautiful coppery new foliage as it grows very dense growth habit. I've got these in quite a bit of shade at my house, so I'm not getting much of the color on them. But uh, wow, is it a fast growing screening plant that'll make your neighbors go away in a hurry. This is another one of those plants that probably in zone seven uh, needs to not be out in the, uh, the open uh, wind, but in zone eight, nine, um, no problem at all. Uh, this is a uh, Southern Living Plant Collection camellia called Alabama Beauty. And I have found this one to be one of the faster growing camellia succinctless. Camellias in general don't grow very fast. But this is a, a faster growing uh, camellia succinctless. It's also a very prolific uh, bloomer. It blooms in the fall. You can see the color of the flower right here is a dark pink. And you can see it flowering now. It's in October and it is uh, loaded with buds. Again, these are hardy in zone seven to nine, but with camellias. Uh, they, they require part shade. And so uh, they're, gonna be, uh, they're gonna be a friend to anybody who needs a screening plant in, a, in part shade conditions. Most of the other plants I'm showing you are definitely for sun. Uh, this is a red diamond, Laura Petalum right here. This is a, a beautiful cultivar that has the uh, um, two-tone uh, coloration on the foliage uh, where it has that uh, really nice uh, green in the middle right there uh, that contrasts with that, be that really beautiful purple foliage on the outside. This is a red flowering Laura Petalum cultivar. These are in the witch hazel family. They're evergreen members of the witch hazel family. Very fast growing, great screening plant. Would look really good in some mixture, you know, with quite, again, quite possibly a variegated plant like that Juliet uh, Clara right there. Uh, the next piece right here is a purple diamond Laura Petalum. I showed you red diamond. Purple diamond has that purple coloration throughout the entire plant. Uh, bright pink frilly flowers on it um, spring and fall. Uh, they're hardy, uh, zone seven to 10, industrial, very fast growing, evergreen shrub that really, really, I mean, looks like this 12 months out of the year. And then as a bonus, it blooms a couple times a year. So uh, what a great choice um, that purple diamond Laura Petalum is. Uh, August Beauty Gardenias. Um, I will say that I've come to a uh, you know, Loxley, Alabama, near the Gulf of Mexico to shoot screening plants. And so most of the screening plants I'm showing you are hardy. You know, there's a few that I've shown that have been hardy up to zone four, but 
most of it's been you know six and up and i have a lot of other videos on my channel for more cold hardy screening plants and the um they're in a uh, playlist called screening plants that i'll link up at the uh, top of the screen for those of you who are watching on youtube but the first piece in this last variety here the last set is uh, august beauty gardenia these only get about six feet. Not everybody needs a 15 foot tall screening plant. So if you can get away with six feet, this is a beautiful, lustrous green, uh, evergreen shrub that just happens to have the most fragrant flowers of uh, almost any plant in the world. And uh, August Beauty will, blooms very heavily in the, in the late spring in uh, most of the South. And uh, then we'll get to residual flowers on it later. It's got some buds on it now, even in October, but probably running out of time for those to open at this point. But you can see how full this plant is without really having to do a lot of maintenance on it. The next one right here is this Olive Martini Eliagnus. I actually have a video coming out on this, uh, an update video from where I planted them in my yard. This is a very fast growing, upright, evergreen shrub, and this is a, a, a variegated version of it. You see how beautiful that foliage is right there. It starts off, it doesn't look like it's gonna be variegated, and then the leaves become more and more pronounced, you know, more and more showy over time. These are hardy in zone six to nine, one of the hardiest things I'm showing you, uh, for sure. The next one is actually a, a native to the southeast. This is Miss Scarlet uh, Elysium. Elysium is deer proof, insect resistant. Um, super, super easy plant. Uh, this is a great shade choice, a great screening plant in the shade. And uh, it'll end up 10 or 12 feet, probably gonna be slow to start. Gets little frilly uh, red flowers on it uh, that are just awesome. The uh, foliage smells like licorice when you break the leaves. Again, it's gonna be slow to start and then it's gonna take off pretty quick, but it's one of those plants that in a part shade or shade space, a lot, we don't have a lot of great choices and this Elysium would definitely uh, be a good one. That's, but that's Miss Scarlet Elysium. That's a Southern Living Plant Collection piece. Thank you guys for following along with the channel and uh, don't forget to subscribe for upcoming content. Thanks for watching.